Ronnie, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I'm so excited to talk with you. Um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, and your background. Well, hello, I'm Ronnie Coyle. I am a higher ed instructor in marketing with um, uh, mostly digital marketing courses at NWTC. So I um, have a lot of fun teaching the future marketers in the world, as well as some of the current marketers and helping them uh, learn the digital side of things as well. So um, it, it's been really fun having, um, you know, my students be um, all sorts of ages and from all uh, backgrounds and experiences as well. Awesome. I've met a couple of your classes and I always enjoy that your students, like they, I can speak to them about whatever marketing or digital, digital strategies and they know what I'm talking about. So I was like, hey, they're smart. They got it going on. It's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm sure they would appreciate <laughs> hearing that as well. <laughs> I'll pass it along. Um, I know today we really wanted to talk about what individuals who are thinking about going into marketing can do, um, how to prepare for it. And so one of the, the biggest questions that I have for you are what are some of the basic skills that marketers should be working on um, in order to be successful? Yeah, whenever I have this question, it's always tough to determine which direction that I go with it. Am I thinking about skills from a personal standpoint or am I thinking about skills in a way of tools and tactics that they need to learn? Mm -hmm. And I think typically I would you know, provide some answers like, well, you need to learn how to do some video because video marketing is hot right now, or you might want to get into podcasting. But I think in this case, I kind of want to come from a personal standpoint of, um, I kind of, I've been working on this. I've developed this a little bit and I don't know if I'm quite where I want to be with it, but there are five skills that I think I'd mention here. The first one would be uh, versatility. And the reason why I say versatility is going back to what I just mentioned about tools and tactics. There are so many when it comes to being a marketer, especially a digital marketer, you could be like, okay, I need to find a social listening tool. And there can be 10 yeah. of those out there. And it's like, which one do I even use or become familiar with, right? So as a marketer, I think it's a good skill to know that you are versatile and can be versatile whenever it comes to this that you want to learn. And that actually goes into one of my other ones as well. Um, I would say being open-minded. And the reason why I say this is because of two reasons. One is consumer trends and they're always changing. And we know from this last year that they've changed a lot. And we need to be able to uh, be open-minded to the change, as well as what tools and resources that we need um, in that time. The other part to that is the social causes that we have right now as well. I think if we stay open-minded, it helps us with our business, our messaging, um, and how to get in front of our, our consumer, our target audience, right? Um, you don't want to be close to those uh, opportunities or to just be there to listen to what's going on and what people are saying. I really, uh, I really love that you said that because I think, you know, we've always done it this way or people that are just continuing to push out the same message and not react to really what's happening in the world right now or what people are going through. I'm not that we want to focus on the negative, but but you have to be open-minded. You have to be agile and flexible. Love that. Absolutely. I think the next one would be one of my favorites, something that I lean on a lot is curiosity. And I'm always wanting to learn. I'm always, you know, going down the rabbit hole <laughs> when, when I see something that I really like and want to learn more about. So you always have to be curious in this field to, um, you know, understand what other platforms are doing or services. Take, for instance, um, marketers might be closed off to what TikTok might be able to offer them or saying that that's a younger audience. But that's exactly why you need to be in there because it is a different audience. And if it's a different way to be able to reach people. 
So why wouldn't you want to jump in there and understand it a little bit more? Be curious about what you can do there. And I think too, like TikTok is a really good example. That audience changed overnight in March of last year. <laughs> like all of a sudden it was a totally different demographic and it got adopted by a new generation. And, you know, being being flexible and curious about all of those those platforms, it's super important to just, just because you think something isn't important now doesn't mean that tomorrow all of a sudden it won't be the next big thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that actually leads into my next one, which is adaptability, being able to adapt to these tools. Um, because I feel like adaptability and versatility are two different things. Adapting is taking what you have in front of you and adapting to that. Versatility is just kind of knowing everything so that when that time comes, you can adapt to whatever it is. So, um, and, and that goes along the lines of adapting to who your team is adapting to who your supervisor is. I mean, it's across the board of where you need your adaptability to be. And then lastly, I would say a good skill to have is brand building. Yep. And this is both uh, professionally and personally, because professionally, um, you know, there's a lot of businesses out there that need this and may not understand how to do this. So you can offer your services to them with that. But on a personal standpoint, um, you have to kind of showcase who you are and what you do uh, to provide others, you know, what you can bring to them. Um, we also need to look at it as a standpoint that we should be doing brand building for our uh, staff or for our teammates or things like that, because that really shows who the business, the company is as well. So. I took the letters from those five things and it spelled out vocab, which I, I thought was, which was very interesting. And I was like, okay, what can I do with vocab, which we know is short for vocabulary. So then I looked up the definition and it says that it's a body of words known to an individual person, which I thought was really interesting that it said to an individual person, which I thought really relates to who a marketer is we can say marketer and everybody's a marketer, but really what sets them apart is what do they know and who are they as a human? Because who they are as a human really comes through on how they work with their team, the messaging that they get, get across and what you see for the business or the brand. I love that. I think that's, that's super cool. And I, I like how you applied it. <laughs> So we've talked a little bit or a lot about how like an individual person should react and, and work on themselves. Um, but one of the things we kind of you alluded to a little bit is some of the resources or tools that marketers can tap into. So what are some of the, the resources or tech out there or tools that you, uh, you would recommend to a new marketer? Yeah, I think first, and I think this is because I am a higher ed instructor, I would say definitely reach out to your instructors and local professionals. Those are really, um, you know, people that you can lean on as mentors. And I think having mentors um, is just that person that you can go to if you have a question, bounce ideas off of, brainstorm with so many different ways. Um, and, and it's not that they may not know everything, but for us, being able to bounce something off of somebody else may already give us the answer ourselves. I mean, how many times have we done that? We go and right. ask somebody a question and you're like, oh, I think I may have just answered it myself. Yes, yeah. all the time. <laughs> so having that person would be good. Um, a couple of things that I really like as resources is Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. I have about five or six that I really rely on and I go out to almost on a daily basis to see what's being discussed out there. And a lot of those end up talking about things that I can use either from an instructor point of view, or if I'm helping, you know, someone in the community uh, with their business or their own personal brand, I can really use the, that information or resources as well. Um, and kind of to go with that would be uh, YouTube creators. I really love YouTube. I watch YouTube all the time, trying to learn things, um, different skills and whatnot. And uh, podcast, 
is another one as well. So I have a couple of podcasts that I listen to religiously and they've provided a lot of backbone to who I am as a marketer. Um, what are they? Well, the first one that I would, I would mention is um, This Old Marketing with Joe Polizzi and Robert Rose, cool. one of my favorites. And they look at, um, they've kind of changed the direction of their podcast. And they talk a lot more about um, stuff from a business standpoint, but there's a lot of high level information that they provide that we have to look at as marketers um, to maybe understand um, where things might be going. Like they're on, they're on a big discussion right now with NFTs, non-fungible tokens, right? Mm -hmm. That's a huge discussion right now. Where does that fall in with marketing? <laughs> don't know yet, but it's something to keep out there in case it does, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> um, and then a couple of things from my education point of view is I really love to use Hootsuite Academy. They have tons of great resources and um, they provide my students a, a different point of view from what I'm giving them, which I always love to give my students. I want them to take different points of view of what social media marketing is, say, for instance, so that whenever it comes to them, they can kind of pick, you know, cherry pick things out of there, of what they like from each point of view. Um, other ones that kind of fall in line with that would be LinkedIn Learning, uh, HubSpot Academy. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Google Education has a couple of good things out there. And one that I'm going to start jumping into to learn more about is Facebook uh, Blueprint. So there's a couple of resources that could be used. Awesome. I love that. And even sometimes like um, agencies or, or content makers themselves even create, you know, different courses and things. So it's always worth if there's brands that you really admire or marketing agencies that you really love, you know, learn more about them. I know we're working on one right now and it's, it's awesome. It's super fun to be able to create that. Um, but also, you know, there's, there's people that have been in the industry for a long time. And they have a lot to say about, especially social media. So absolutely. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are things that like we as marketers, I mean, of course, the landscapes changed a lot over, you know, it's changing all the time. Um, but there's some tried and true things that marketers have been doing probably for decades. What are some of the things that, you know, the old school tactics that are around to stay? Well, one is, I, and I know that you, um, you know, talk a lot about this. And I, if I remember, I've watched some of your videos as well. And I believe you've had a couple of people on here that have talked about this. But I think a tried and true tactic is telling a good story. Mm hmm right? Yep, 100%. <laughs> so um, talking about Robert Rose being on uh, that podcast that I was talking about, he always ends with a, a, a saying, it's, it's tell, or let me, I'm looking over to my, my notes and make sure it's your story to tell, tell it well. Mm -hmm. And I think what typically happens is we have businesses that, um, they think that the story is maybe a blog post or a social media post. They don't understand it's everything. Everything that has to do with the business is the story. These other things are just little components of being able to tell that story, but it all needs to connect. Mm -hmm. And that's where we kind of lose things, no matter what tool or tactic that you're using. If you can come back to that basic of what is that story that we want to tell and always using that as kind of that go-to. We, we need to keep that in mind whenever we do our post or our video or our podcast or anything like that. Um, that really holds it all together. I love that. And then I think if I want to add one more thing on here that's tried and true that gets lost is an actual tool and it's a channel and that would be email. Yep. Now, this is funny because I'm, I'm a social media guy. I love my social media. You know, that's all I've been doing mostly for the last 11 years professionally. Um, that's what my master's degree is in. But email, I think, is one of those things that gets lost in the shuffle and is um, 
and, and I wouldn't say that not anybody's doing well. There's a lot of people out there doing it well. Um, but if you can include that storytelling into your email, I think that's really what captures a good audience. And the way that I like to put this is that we all have social security numbers and that that's our existence, right? Yeah. Well, our digital existence is around an email because yeah. we all have to have an email to sign up for something, some kind of account, whatever it is, if you're going to be on digital and you want to be able to purchase something or whatever, you have to have an email. So everybody has one. And if you can find a way to cut through the spam and the clutter and the tons of emails that people are getting, I think that it's very instrumental and important to uh, marketing. I love that. And honestly, like email is the only form of, well, first of all, you have to be invited. People invite you into their inbox. And it's the only like agreed type of marketing where, where it's, and I don't normally like interruption-based marketing, but email is interruption-based marketing, but when done well, it's welcome. Um, so it's like, you know, Facebook messages or ads or websites, that user always has to take an action to get there. But with email, you can send, you're the one that initiates the action. Um, and even if they don't click on it, they still see your name pop up. And that is, that's branding, that's awareness. Um, <laughs> that's, that's still really helpful. So I love that you said that. Um, I, I know that email marketing works really well. It works well for us and a lot of our clients. So um, I love that you said that. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so you obviously help develop and teach and grow students and marketers um, in, into marketers and better marketers. What is some advice you would give to somebody that's maybe considering going into marketing or digital marketing for either like they're starting out their career or they're considering making a shift? Play in the sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think that, I don't think that students and those that want to learn more are trying to get out there and get whatever experience that they can enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we notice it from some, they go out there and, you know, I have examples of students that have taken four or five internships while they are doing their classes because they want to experience it all and see what what is what direction do they want to go mm -hmm. and you don't really know until you start doing that you can't just go through education and be like okay that is the exact thing that i'm going to do and go out there because it can be totally different mm -hmm. um, so I, and to kind of give an example with that you know, 11 years ago, I started with social media marketing. I thought I was going to be doing web development, uh, web publishing, and all that, because that's where some of my additional education has been. I've, I've been doing continuing learning ever since um, I got out of college. And one of the things that I learned was how to code. Well, I ended up starting to code FBML tabs for Facebook when mm -hmm. you could do such a thing. <laughs> and I started learning social media and Facebook and I was like, this is really exciting. So then I was like, at that time, ads were starting to come out with Facebook. I was like, Oh, what can you do with this? And started playing with that, um, doing different things with posting with visuals and, and all that. And I was just using my curiosity that I mentioned as one of those skills. I was just really curious about it and started playing around. And that's when I learned that social media was, an emphasis of where I want it to be and a concentration. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we figure those things out unless we go out there and, and play around with these things to understand them a little bit more and know what we want to know more about them. Absolutely. And I, I love that actually in my first like real job, it was not in marketing. Um, but I asked to proof things or I asked to be in, like, I volunteered to do, marketing like things, even though there was a marketing department, I wasn't a part of it, but I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be involved in it. And I think um, when people are considering maybe a career change, if you're part of an organization, you know, maybe you're an admin, maybe you're in finance, maybe you have a different kind of role that marketing appeals to you. There's, 
always ways that that you could you know ask hey i would love to to proof copy before it goes out or i'd love to see ads before we place them or whatever i can do to help i think that's that's a super important thing and and to like um there's lots of ways to stay kind of like in the know about it, whether it's through a LinkedIn feed or through your Apple news feed or through Facebook or whatever news app you use. Um, there's lots of ways to stay informed. And I think that kind of helps you, like you said earlier, keeps you curious and you get to play in the sandbox a little bit. You get to learn about things. Here's the thing. Marketing is everywhere for mm -hmm. us as marketers. We can, we will make the argument that marketing is everything. Marketing is yeah. life. Right. So everything that you can possibly do to get the experience and uh, you can help family and friends out with their businesses, with their personal mm -hmm. brands. There's so much out there that you mm -hmm. can do just to grab the experience that you need to learn more and give you a little bit of a direction. Absolutely. 100% agree. Well, Ronnie, thank you so much for chatting today. I've loved talking with you um, and I know that we'll be in touch. Thank you so much for having me on. I loved it.